Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we have a definite integral from zero to one, and our integrand is consists of some exponential functions that our base is not the constant e, but some real numbers. So I have, so what we have is nine to the power x plus one divided by three to the power x plus one and then dx. So from a first glance, it might look something a little uneasy slash uncomfortable from, you know, your first glance that you might be thinking that is it possible to do something elementary out of it from, you know, calculus that you learn, but you got to think things a little bit differently. So the thing is that what we will do is, you know, simplify some stuff, especially as you notice that nine to the power X can be rewritten as the same thing as three to the power two times X. So we, that's actually a good starting point that we will be using. Then we got to get a little bit creative to the point that we have to do something, you know, that will actually we will be utilizing some elementary calculus techniques. Then doing that from there, we'll actually just follow with a bunch of linearity and actually we'll make a bunch of those integrals a little, a whole lot easier to, you know, work around with. So what's the trick that we're going to be using eventually as we come to that step? Well, you'll just have to find out. So why don't we actually just jump right in? So as mentioned, we can actually rewrite this integral. So zero to one. So I mentioned nine to the power X is written as the same thing as three to the power two times X plus one, and then divided by three to the power X plus one DX. Okay, so here comes the trick. Let's actually now multiply and divide a three to the power X multiply by ln of three to both the numerator and denominator. So we have zero to one, so three to the power X ln of three, then multiply with three to the power two X plus one, then divide it by, so three to the power X, then ln of three. So it's the same thing since this retains the same identity since it's just multiplying a one. So we just write things a little bit differently. So three to the power X and then plus one, then DX. So here's the clever thing that we'll be using. So, well, I already mentioned that, but the elementary trick is what we'll be using coming up. That's what I meant to say. So we actually be doing a U sub. So we're actually gonna let U equals three to the power X plus one then du simply is just taking the derivative of this, which is just three to the power x times ln of three, and then dx. Simple enough that we notice that it will just cancel one of our um, terms out when we substitute the new du differential, but it's not gonna look a little um, easy given the fact that we have a three to the two x plus one, then we have three x ln of three on the denominator. So we actually have to rewrite some things a little bit differently, but you also have to be a little bit careful on how you write this just so you don't you know, screw yourself up. So let me actually switch to the new market for this one. And of course, don't forget to change your bounds. Remember, we're in a new, we're now dealing with a new variable. So that means the bounds gonna have to change from here. With this in mind, so now our new bounds, so if I plug in one for X, so plug in here, so that means U is going to be four, and then for the top, and then I plug zero, so that means this is actually just gonna be two on the bottom. Then what we have is now, okay, so notice that three to the two X plus one, so I have something in terms of U, notice that I can actually rewrite this writing as U minus one, then quantity square, and then later afterwards, then add one, so that will still retain the same thing from the three to the power two X plus one. Rewrite this in terms of U. And then under the denominator, I have an LN of three, so that doesn't change. But then the three X over here, I can actually write that as now the following. So U minus one, and then three X plus one, three, three to the power X plus one, we can just simply put that back for U. So what we have now is this integral from U minus one quantity squared plus one divided by ln of three times U minus one times U with ln of three being a constant outside. So I'll factor that out. So I have one divided by ln of three. And then we have this integral to work with from two to four. And then from here we have the integral. So U minus one quantity squared plus one and then divided by U times U minus one and then DU. Okay, so with this in mind, so let's actually now apply the linearity that I mentioned in the intro. So I have one divided by ln of three. So let me actually break the, um, put in the parentheses here. So from our integral from two to four. So first I have a u minus one square plus one, and then that's a quantity u minus one. So I could actually just cancel one of those terms out. So that'll just leave us with u minus one and then divided by u du. Then afterwards I have a plus one. So that means now that's just left with plus. So the integral from two to four of one divided by u 
times u minus one and then du. But notice that we have this integral, uh, one divided by u, u minus one. So with this integrand that it's actually, we're gonna have to apply some partial fraction decomposition. This is pretty easy slash elementary to you know perform. So I'm actually just gonna skip that step. Um, so coming to over here, we notice u minus one divided by u. Again, we can actually apply some more linearity to that and break that up. So now I have the integral from two to four then u divided by u, so that means just one, so I'll just write this as du, and then subtract the integral from two to four of one divided by u du. All right, so now after this step, for applying the partial fraction decomposition, what we'll have is, so plus the integral from two to four of one divided by u minus one, and then du, and then afterwards subtract the integral from two to four of one divided by u du. Take a look at everything we have. That's pretty easy to integrate, right? We have a du over here of this integral. So what does that mean? I have just u. So let's see, one divided by ln of three. So that'll just leave us with u. Integral of this, this the antiderivative is just simply just ln of u. And then afterwards, so one divided by u minus one, that's just ln of u minus one. And then we also have a one over u over here, the antiderivative is ln of u again. So subtract that twice from those minus. That means I have minus two, then ln of u and then plus now just ln of u subtract one. And now we just evaluate this simply just from our um, bounds from two to four. So first, if I plug in u is equal four, so that means now that will just yield us with four minus two times ln of four, and then plus ln of three. Notice that ln of four can be further simplified because that's the same thing written as ln of two to the power two. I'll just move that exponent of two to the other, to the front. So I have now that would be four times ln of two. We'll just get to that later, but let's take things one at a time. So u equals two, plug this back into over here. So that means this is gonna be simply just two, then minus two ln of two, and then over here, ln of one, um, ln of two minus one, of course, that's ln of one, which is simply just equal to zero. So let's put all this back together. So that means I have one divided by ln of three. Then, so I have this term and then subtract this term. So first, firstly, first that I have that this is gonna be, so let's just put everything back together, four minus four ln of two. That's just after applying the um, logarithmic properties of the exponent then add this with ln of three, then subtract from this term, so subtract two, and then plus two, ln of two, okay? And so simply just one divided by ln of three, so let's combine everything together, so that means this is just gonna yield us with two, then minus two times ln of two, and then plus ln of three, then we can actually just further simplify by dis um, distributing the one over ln of three, that will just yield us with just one, but then ln of three is under the denominator for this two terms over here. So yielding us with a final answer of just two minus two times ln of two divided by ln of three, and then plus one. And so there we have it, our final answer to, as um, Dr. Michael Penn would say something as a chimera equation, rather we're dealing with something of a chimera integral, I guess that's the title of this video, I suppose. <laughs> you can take, you can uh, approach that however you want to, but there we have it. It's a, a nice answer to something as, you know, as mentioned what Dr. Michael Penn said, a chimera integral. So just like that, there we have it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.